the Pantanal, Jaguar country, spreading like a veil across the borders of Brazil, Bolivia, and Paraguay. Filmmakers come here hoping to catch the cats in action and leave, lucky to have spied any jaguars at all. German cinematographer Christian Baumeister will press his luck even further and try to capture the phantom cat as few have ever witnessed it. Filming wild jaguars is extremely difficult. They're very, very elusive animals and they're really well hidden in their vegetation. Pantanal, Portuguese for big swamp, pretty much describes it. The size of New York State, for half the year, 80% of it is underwater. The variety of animals that depend on the seasonal deluge makes the area one of the most important freshwater systems on the planet. One of the world's highest densities of jaguars lives here. They hunt from the riverbanks, where their prey gathers, especially in the dry season. The only chance to film jaguars, wild jaguars, is on the riverside. That's the reason why we are going up and down these long rivers here in the Pantanal for days and even weeks trying to find jaguars. Christian has filmed South American wildlife for more than 10 years, but the elusive cat has always slipped his gaze. Today, he's acting on a tip from a local. I saw tracks of jaguars, but I never saw a jaguar. But now, finally, we found the spot where we think that we can work with the jaguars. En route, he finds caimans, the jaguar's occasional prey, and another Pantanal top predator. Their limited ability to change color, like chameleons, hasn't done much good. Caimans were hunted almost to extinction in the 1980s. Strict conservation laws have replenished their ranks, and they are no longer threatened. Where the low-slung caiman depends on stealth, the leggy wood stork resorts to dirty tricks. It uses its foot to stir up fish, then unfurls a wing to throw a sinister shadow on the water. Suspicious fish flee the dark shape and head straight into the hungry bird's mouth. Over the years, the Pantanal has given Christian plenty of natural history to film. Everything, it seems, except jaguars. Till today. That was a very special moment seeing my first Jaguar. It's such a powerful animal, beautiful, and suddenly they appear on the river edge and you look at him and he looks at you and there's some kind of interaction going on and it's really exciting and it's one of the most intimate moments I've experienced with wild animals. Spotting a jaguar is one step, but filming it in action is a completely different story. Many, many times they just sleep in the shadows, and then, after an hour or two, they simply disappear into the forest. And you have to wait another few days before you see your next jaguar. Christian isn't the only one on the lookout for jaguars. The Western Hemisphere's largest feline plays cat and mouse with the world's largest rodent, the capybara, about the size of a German shepherd. Each year, females have litters of up to eight pups.
the slow and vulnerable babies have no sense of danger and depend entirely on the vigilance of the adults for about the first year. The grown-ups work together, keeping an eye on each other's young. Whether the babies know it or not, someone's always got their back. The moment one of the group detects a jaguar, it sounds the alarm. Unlike the capybaras, Christian can't expect the jaguar to come to him. But the encounter has given him an idea. After that glimpse of my very first jaguar, I know how to better my chances of seeing it again. But I'll still need luck on my side, since only about four jaguars live here, in an area the size of Manhattan. And even when they are nearby, they're hard to spot. The jaguar's striking pattern seems conspicuous, but only when the cat's out of context. The brilliant rosettes mimic the dappled light of the leafy forest. Jaguars have a close to perfect camouflage, so it's really hard to find them. So we have to go up and down many times on the river to just find one. Not an easy job at all. Sometimes you pass in front of a jaguar, just a few meters, and you don't see it. You really only have a chance if they move. With only one jaguar occupying a territory that can spread up to 30 square kilometers, chances of a sighting seem almost nil. Perhaps the best way to catch up with a jaguar is to think like one. And that means tracking its next meal. In this case, a caiman. Central and South America's answer to the alligator, the caiman has evolved over millions of years and honed its predatory skills. Its close-set eyes see straight ahead and at a distance, so coming at it from behind might be the best bet. Jaguars can't sprint far, so catching a caiman takes stealth. And when that fails, persistence. I'm lucky. The jaguar continues watching out for prey. wild splendor. In truth, the Pantanal is 95% privately owned, mainly by ranchers. They raise more than 4 million head of cattle here. A rancher can't keep an eye on every cow. Cattle, with no defense other than size, make up one of the jaguar's biggest food sources. Last night, this cow survived an attack. The wounds need disinfecting.
calves are even more vulnerable. A jaguar mauled this one's face. Lucky it missed its throat. Even though the wounded cattle will heal, the ranchers still suffer. Jaguars claim about 4% of the livestock each year, more than the ranchers are willing to sacrifice. So some of them take action. Even though it's 20 times larger than the Florida Everglades, it seems the Pantanal just isn't big enough for both the ranchers and the native cats. And that concerns Christian. I'm worried about the Jaguar's future. I feel for the cattle and the ranchers, but most of all, I feel for the beautiful cats. He's not alone. This man has devoted his career to reconciling jaguars, humans, and commercial interests. Biologist Fernando Acevedo has studied jaguars for more than a decade. He and his team managed to fit 10 of them with radio collars to learn about their behavior in the wild. Today, they track the signal of an old male. He leads them towards his familiar haunt, but this time the situation's not so familiar. second untagged jaguar comes out of the shadows. She's in the mood for mating. The territories of male and female jaguars barely overlap, and Christian is one of the few to film a pair mating. If it weren't for the male's radio tag, and pure serendipity, he would have never witnessed this. The pair will mate several times over the next hours. In a few days, they'll part company, and the female will raise the cubs alone. Far too soon, they disappear again. But this was great. The first time I've actually filmed some behavior. As Christian follows the jaguar along the banks, he spies another of the river's top predators, giant otters. Even caimans steer clear of them, though a jaguar might, on rare occasions, hunt them. They can grow to almost two meters and will devour over four kilos of fish and crustaceans every day. Social animals, they usually form family groups of an adult pair and as many as 10 pups. The group plays, eats, grooms, and sets up house together, clearing a comfortable spot and then building an underground den. They give it that homey smell by rubbing their anal gland into the mud. That should make any potential trespasser think twice. 
By now, they've worked up an appetite. And so, they head to their favorite eating spot. At the trunk of a tree, an uninvited guest joins the group. A great kiskadee. It hovers nearby to steal scraps from the otter's hard-earned catch. For now, there's enough to go around. But when another one joins, the otters lose patience. As the jaguar slips deeper into the swamp, Christian and his team must switch to horses and slog into the more remote places. It's his only chance of getting what he's come for. Over the last decades, I don't think there's been any wildlife filmmaker who has succeeded in filming wild jaguars at all, or let's say filming behavior of wild jaguars. I don't mean getting a shot of a sleeping jaguar or jaguars sitting on the river edge, but really following their life cycle. And that is extremely difficult. Today the jaguar seems particularly active. Nearby, a tapir keeps its guard up. It doesn't want to meet the jaguar for lunch. The big cat isn't giving it a second look. Opting to play in the water instead. The tapir, a distant relative of the horse, might be able to outswim the jaguar, but why take chances? Best to steer clear in the first place. As Christian follows the jaguar deeper into the Pantanal, he gets treated to an insider's look at some of the other residents, including this Kawati family. Bands of females and juveniles roam the forests, tolerating males only during the mating season. The little ones probably don't even realize the danger lurking below. This youngster is too preoccupied trying to conquer an unripe avocado. One misstep away from disaster. As long as they stay in the trees, they'll be safe. The jaguar can climb, but could never catch the agile coatis. It's now the end of August, and Christian is more determined than ever, and a little more desperate. If I don't capture a hunt within the next couple of weeks, the rain will set in, and I'll have to wait at least seven months before I can give it another try. By late November, the Pantanal will transform from savanna to marshland. For now, huge flocks of jabirus among the largest birds on the planet, gather around the few remaining ponds to gavel up frogs, fish, and small reptiles. The gangly, about one and a half meter tall storks could take as long as seven weeks to build their huge nests, so they often repair and reuse old ones. Jabiru's are devoted partners and may come together for more than one breeding season. 
as the August sun beats down, this male treats his mate to a shower. The female will lay two to four eggs. By dusk, the birds have settled in to safely await the dawn. Although dusk normally means the end of my filming day, I love the evening mood in the Pantanal. But Christian knows this call is deceptive, because at dusk and dawn, the jaguar hunts cattle, fueling the hatred of the ranchers. hunt to live, and cattle are convenience foods, attacked when other prey isn't available. On a cattle ranch, Fernando Acevedo and his team find this armadillo carcass, shelled like a peanut. The way the flesh was taken out of the, the animal, it's typical from a, a jaguar attack. After three years studying jaguars' food habits, we found that jaguars use one-third of cattle and two-thirds of wild animals. The biologists believe that given a choice, jaguars would prefer wild game to a side of beef. If ranchers conserve the habitat of the cat's natural prey, cattle kills will go down. In his laboratory, Fernando and his team have carefully catalogued the remains of jaguar kills. Everything from rabbits and raccoons to this caiman skull, which bears the crushing evidence of a jaguar's huge jaws. In the Pantanal, only the jaguar can inflict damage like this. This is a jaguar skull, and it's a very powerful structure made of uh, long and very powerful canines, and also uh, the maxillar bone, which is made of uh, canals where the muscles go to help uh, build this massive bite. No wonder farmers fear for their livestock. But Fernando and his team have come up with simple ways to reduce the conflict between cat and cow. They've discovered that jaguars are less likely to attack if the cattle stand more than 200 meters from the forest, leaving the cats no place to stage a sneak attack. And if the ranchers don't hunt the jaguar's natural prey on their land, some can cut their losses to less than half a percent a year. The solution saves cows and jaguars. Food motivates jaguars. So does sex. A few days have passed since Christian saw the running pair. But he'll take advantage of the season by trying a highly risky experiment to lure the carnal cats. Because they occupy huge territories, female cats can't be subtle about announcing their receptiveness to the males. Their love song sounds something like this. This is an old trick used by the hunters here in the Pantanal. It imitates the call of the female jaguar and attracts the males. But you have to be very careful, because if the males are around, they can be really aggressive during the mating season. <laughs> 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 
proving that point, a few miles downriver, Christian finds a male jaguar, probably injured in a fight with a rival. He's not the only one having a bad day. This dead caiman also lost fight. At least the vultures are happy to enjoy a balanced meal. American black vultures sometimes hunt and kill small animals, but not when they can tear into a big carcass. If the jaguar hasn't broken any bones, he'll soon be fine. The otter takes advantage of the cat's helplessness and braves a solo swing. Like house cats, jaguars nimble grass from time to time. It helps them regurgitate indigestible bones and clumps of fur. Pantanal has two seasons, rainy and dry. Even during the dry season, the soggy terrain challenges those who try to cross. But wet socks are the least of Christian's worries. He has to remember that he's an intruder in a wild and hazardous landscape. It's extremely dangerous filming jaguars. As wildlife filmmakers, we're completely exposed. We very often have to walk through dense vegetation. If you're around animals for a long time, you get used to them and can underestimate their power. They are hunters and killing machines. They're potentially very, very dangerous. So it is quite risky to do what we do. Many locals, or pantaneros, fear jaguars, but the big cats seldom attack humans. It has happened. If you come face to face with a jaguar and it shows signs that it wants to attack, that's a very dangerous situation. In case you run, you're completely lost, because it's a cat with powerful instincts and it will run behind you and will attack. As September passes, the rainy season will begin, putting this place underwater. But for now, the capybaras enjoy chewing the scenery. A caracara joins them. To this bird, a capybara makes a handy snack bar. It takes its pick of ticks, maggots, and larvae nestled in the capybara's fur. But the capybara gets something even more valuable than skin care. The bird's vigilance might help save the rodent's life. Because one day, the jaguar will come. Christian is counting on it. He constantly searches for jaguar tracks near the capybara family. And today, he's not disappointed. That's amazing. So it's very fresh jaguar tracks. We have been passing by this little beach 10 minutes ago, and there was nothing to see on the beach. And now we have these tracks here. So probably the jaguar is still around. 
So we have to be a little bit careful because it can be dangerous. Much more so for the capybaras. It seems everyone wants these rodents. Jaguars like to eat them, and humans hunt them for their pelts. Normally they tend to hide, but this capybara family has ventured into the open and into trouble. Closer, downwind, so the rodents don't pick up his scent. But the copy bars are on to him. Despite the alarm calls, the jaguar persists undeterred. <gasps> and a little one pays the price. I'm happy that at last I got a kill, but when I film such a scene, I always feel for the victim as well as for the hunter. I know, as a filmmaker, you should only watch and never interfere with the events of nature. All life in the Pantanal heeds the water's ebb and flow. In the dry season, fish crowd into the shrinking ponds, where thousands of herons gather to feed. Predators come here too, and so will Christian. He's already filmed more jaguar behavior this trip than he dared hope for. But now he's after the ultimate shot, a jaguar killing a caiman. It's a sight few have ever seen. The bird seeks safety in numbers, well aware a caiman lurks in his waters. But the reptile has found easier pickings. Despite their toothy grins, Caimans can't bite their prey into manageable bits. Instead, they tear it apart with a vigorous shake. No jaguar here. So Christian moves on. Joined by Kawalina Rivas a Brazilian otter specialist who saw a jaguar the last time she came to this place. Still, it's a long shot they'll see it again. Jaguars move a lot, they have huge territories, so it's very difficult to see the same individuals in the same spot. But after working with jaguars for a couple of months now, you start recognizing individual animals. And then you start understanding how they move and how they behave and getting really familiar with these cats. Today, Christian meets an old acquaintance. He first saw this jaguar several months ago. The 
the Jaguar's presence doesn't intimidate this family of otters, who refuse to sacrifice their swim time. They frolic just a few meters away, fully confident they can outswim it. More important, the big cat knows it too, so he won't bother to try. The young otters will stay in the protection of their parents for about two years. They'll learn to cautiously share the river with the big cat, who seeks a better hunting opportunity on the far bank. missing an opportunity. He's running out of time. It's extremely frustrating if you're out every day and you don't see jaguars and you're looking for the animals and you simply don't see them or if you see them that don't do anything. You need a lot and lot of patience working with these animals. But his patience is about to pay off in an unexpected way. Christian spots a giant anteater, almost two meters long. This species has disappeared in many countries, so is worth filming. When attacked, the massive insect eater will rear up on its hind legs, balance on its tail, and can kill a jaguar with its deadly, sharp clawed embrace. In October, the rainy season begins. Hyacinth macaws can live to be 50, so we'll see many a change of season. The rising water will claim an area the size of Louisiana, with each thunderstorm swallowing a little more land. to March, up to 2,000 millimeters of rain will fall. Caymans mate during the dry season, and by March, the hatchlings take to the water. Of the dozens of eggs each mother caiman lays every year, only a few escape the clutches of jaguars and other nest robbers. The deluge finally gives the caimans room to spread out and the chances of filming a jaguar hunting one grow slimmer every day. But Christian isn't giving up. He returns to the territory of the first jaguar he spotted. He finds it again, sneaking through the dense vegetation. Christian and the cat have the same target in mind, a caiman.
just like that, it's over. The jaguar sharp canines pin the caiman and sever the nerves in its neck. The battle could have easily gone the other way. But this time, the jaguar wins. And so does Christian. The cat hides the 60 kilo carcass in the bushes to feed unnoticed. Feline and filmmaker have bagged their prey. By filming the big cat's kill, I've accomplished my mission, what I'd only dreamed of doing, capturing breathtaking jaguar behavior few have ever witnessed. The jaguar's future in this wilderness lies in the hands of the ranchers who equally depend on the Pantanal. There's hope they'll learn to share it. Before Christian leaves, a jaguar mother gives him a final gift, a precious look at her young cub. Growing strong in their fragile, shifting world. One thing is for sure, I will one day return to my Jaguars and hope to find them well. <laughs>